So the Mario movie is a huge hit, as in the biggest hit in animation history since the Frozen movies, as well as easily, hands down, no contest, the biggest video game movie ever made. Which I imagine is what Nintendo was shooting for and has clearly hit bullseye. It goes without saying that Nintendo would be crazy not to create more movies based on their properties, but today I wanted to talk about how Nintendo should proceed with a property that, I'll be honest, I would be much more excited to see in movie form than the Mario movie, as excited for and pleased with that one as I was, The Legend of Zelda. A franchise that has spent almost as long as Mario and has just as dedicated of a fan base as Mario, but also, more to the point, much more delicate of a fan base as well. That is to say, there have been quite a few times when the show creator or game creator has gotten this franchise wrong, and even a few times when fans thought Nintendo got it wrong, and it did not sit pretty. Well, excuse me! So, for Link's first outing on the big screen, it's essential that they get this right. Now, it goes without saying, but I'm sure Nintendo will explore this option anyway. Illumination ain't the guys for the job. That's like asking a McDonald's cook to make a filet mignon. Their goofy, colorful nature was suitable for Mario, but trust me when I say you try that with Zelda, it ain't gonna end well. Now, a lot of you are probably looking back at the title of the video and thinking, but wait, CM, DreamWorks is just as goofy as Illumination. I mean, did you see that character in Trolls farting glitter? Why wouldn't you rather have Pixar handle this? First of all, because Pixar is better with their own original ideas, and I hope enough people see Elemental to find that out. But second, Nintendo has partnered up with Universal, and while there could be some discussions and negotiations outside of the lot, you know as well as I do, it would be easier for them to discuss it in-house. So their options are basically either Illumination, DreamWorks, or a live-action studio. On that point, though, why am I suggesting an animated film versus a live-action fantasy epic? Well, to put it simply, there's nothing besides the iconic costumes and symbols that would separate a live-action Zelda from something like Lord of the Rings. It would have a similar look, similar tone, hopefully not a similar runtime, Time, but it would be just as much of the same thing as before. An animated Zelda movie, on the other hand, has the potential to be this noble, prestigious, non-Disney prince rescuing a princess from a monster film that could stand out in the market. And just like with the Mario movie, that's most likely what Nintendo's going to go for. Plus, it would allow Nintendo to make the characters look like the characters, again, just like the Mario movie, whereas a live-action movie would have the limitations of what the human actors look like, something that Hollywood has been trying to fight the struggle with for years and failing miserably. Now, a lot of people are probably thinking that all the dungeons and items and monsters from one Zelda game would be way too much for a 90-minute animated movie, but it would be just as well too much for a three-hour live-action epic. That's all just part of the reduction that would have to happen either way, just like how Mario didn't have to go through eight castles to find the Luigi in his movie, so that doesn't necessarily put a cap on an animated movie. So with that in mind, our choices are narrowed down to either Illumination or DreamWorks. And while the choice by that point is obvious by default, DreamWorks may be more capable of pulling this off than most people think. While the studio is mostly known for the goofy nature of their over-hated Trolls movies and the properly hated Boss Baby movies, people forget about the elegant fantasy style that the first Shrek took on as the clothing for its rap on fantasy, as well as the genuinely serious tone that films like How to Train Your Dragon or Kung Fu Panda inherited underneath their goofy character designs and obvious celebrity voice casts. Heck, does anybody remember Rise of the Guardians, a film that inherited both the visual style and serious tone of those films I just mentioned? Sure, it had too wide of an array of characters to properly develop them, and the story was a little too black and white to be remembered, but Zelda wouldn't have that problem. The story is there, the characters are there, and all DreamWorks would have to do is bring that to film form. Boom! Legend of Zelda. Now, after the Mario movie being as huge of a hit as it is, I trust Nintendo to make their own decisions on how to proceed with their properties, but as somebody who would punch through about 10 walls if they don't get this right, I couldn't possibly imagine a better in-house studio for Nintendo to work with than DreamWorks. They have the skills, they have the experience, they have the talent, and as long as Nintendo works closely with them as they did with Illumination on the Mario movie, they shouldn't go off the rails like they've done with some of their other franchises. But either way, even for handling the Hero of Time's big screen day, I feel like the studio has more layers than most people give them credit for.